Hey guys, uh, welcome back to, uh, we're gonna be reviewing My Hero Academia Season 1. Uh, legitimately, I watched this all in a day, I watched the first season in a day. Um, I was, I've been recommended this show by quite a few people, and eventually some friends got, got me to watch it, uh, or start watching it, and I was just kind of... It, it's, it's not what I expected in, like, a, a plot sense or a story sense. Uh, this is going to be a spoiler review, so just if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. I watched it on Hulu. Uh, I watched the dub version of it uh, in English. So, yeah, go ahead and, and go ahead and do that. But, yeah, so we, we'll get started. So you have kind of this world where 80% uh, of the people have some sort of unique ability. A quirk is what they're called. Uh, they're like superpowers in some sense. Uh, some of them can be like kind of simple, it seems like, like a, like a tail or like a few extra limbs. Uh, but others can be kind of like, yeah, but like one of the main characters, uh, you have like All Might, for example, is like the best hero. Yeah. And he his well, he, he might be a bad, bad example because he's actually not born with his powers. He's like inherits his powers. Um, but a better example is probably Kats, uh, Katsuki, who is he essentially can do combu combustion with his hands. And so he can make like fires, explosions, uh, all sorts of things. He can use it to propel himself. Uh, he can use it to fight, obviously, with close quarters. Uh, after he gets his special suit, he can do long quarters, which is pretty sick uh, when that fight happens with uh, Deku. Um, but yeah, so you kind of, the main character here is uh, Izuku. Uh, he's also called Deku, uh, which is actually a name that Katsuki uh, uses, like, derogatorily uh, to him, because it means, like, worthless and, like, lesser than, kind of. And then he eventually takes it up upon himself as a superhero name. Uh, so he just kind of like takes that in and be like, yeah, I am worthless, but I'm still better than you, um, which is like pretty hard, you know. But uh, yeah, so it's it's quite cool to kind of see the the transformation of this character. I was actually quite annoyed. Uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of got where it was going. It was also helpful to have friends there that were like kind of explaining to me some of the stuff when I was asking a shit ton of questions. Um, but uh, at first, I was like kind of annoyed with Izuku just because like. He cries at everything almost, and he's just very weak. But I think that's what, l looking at the whole season, that's what they were going for. Like th it was part of it, where it's like trying to show you where he comes from. He's he's been bullied his whole life essentially since he didn't have any. He didn't have a quirk, which eighty percent of the population is born with a quirk, or uh, and then they'll eventually develop it around like kindergarten is when it kind of shows itself for the most part, and it can develop over time until like. Uh, around their 13, 14, something like that, um, but he just didn't have one, he, his whole family is like four generations of quirk users, um, quirk users, sorry, it's like people that with quirks, so it's, he's kind of an anomaly, he's the only, uh, son of his family, the dad's not really in the picture, so that makes me think something happened to him, um, but his, they do say that his dad used to use combustion, that's also happens to be what, uh, Katsuki, uh, his power is, and then his mom can lift stuff, tell, or not lift stuff, uh, she can, like, make stuff float to her and stuff, which is similar to, uh, to, uh, to another character's power, which he kind of, uh, Deku has, uh, somewhat of a crush on, I guess, or is the, the, like, the, you know, the female, like, uh, counterpart to him is, uh, uh, hi, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to pronounce his name, uh, Ochako, uh, I don't know, that's not how you pronounce it, I'm sorry, but, um, that, that's, like, she can essentially, when she touches something, she can make it float, she can kind of control it, uh, so it is somewhat similar to his mom's power, um, so that's kind of a, a little, uh, interesting thing there with kind of that, uh, trifecta, and um, then you have another one of his, uh, close friends, uh, his compadres is, uh, Tenya, so you have, uh, Ochaka and Tenya who kind of, Tenya basically has like jets. He's he's his power is engine. He basically has like kind of jet legs where he can just run really fast. He's very speedy. Um, yeah, so that helps him like get around and like uh, be of assistance. He his whole family is like generations of like superheroes, uh, and so he has like whole agency with his family. You find out, and he becomes the uh, <laughs> he becomes the uh, kind of the class representative after uh, uh, Deku kind of nominates him uh after Deku actually Deku actually gets the class representative position and then nominates uh uh Tenya because he knows that it's important to him and his family uh and he thinks he'll make a better leader which I, I do agree with but he is kind of dry 
Um, but early on, I was, like, really annoyed with Tenya as a character. I think that's a common thread. Like, early on, I was annoyed with a lot of these characters. I thought All Might was interesting, but I'm like... I, I, honestly, at first, I thought All Might was a villain. Like, I thought it would be something like... Because they do say... So, essentially, the government contracts out with these superheroes. So, the more notoriety you have, the more... Uh, the better your powers are, the better you're at, you are at crime solving. Uh, you will get more money. Uh, you'll be paid more by the government. And so, uh, All Might is the best hero. So at first I was thinking like, okay, so is this something where he's actually, or these heroes are actually creating these villains or like setting these villains loose or it's like a manufactured situation where then they can come in and clean it up and get notoriety from it. Um, but that was not the case. <laughs> I was, I was completely off base there. Uh, and honestly, I was off base with a lot of my guesses of the show because, uh, towards the end, All Might is in a fight um, with some of the some of the bad guys here. One guy, it's like a hand on his face. He disintegrates people. Uh, you had uh, Nomu, which is like some giant bird shock absorption, self regeneration type thing. Uh, and then you had, and then you had some sort of like teleporting mist thing. I'm sorry, the names are all like kind of Japanese, so it's it's tough for me to like actually pronounce them. But if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so. He's in a fight with these guys, and he, uh, and, uh, All Might essentially goes and, and just, uh, I, I thought he was gonna die, I thought he was gonna, which is probably what they were going for, uh, like, to make you feel that way, but even, because there's always, I, I think I've been, like, cor like, uh, corrupted or something from a lot of these movies where it's, like, last second something happens, shocking and all that, so the whole time, even when it looked like they were out of the woods and, like, totally fine, the whole time I was waiting for him to get, like, shot or to get, like, just stabbed or crushed or something happened to him that was just so unexpected and, like, out of left field. And I was, uh, I was not right. Uh, he seems like he will lose the fight, but he outthinks uh, the characters or the, the villains here. Uh, particularly Nomu, who's like his main rival in this scenario, he outthinks him, and uh, and sends him flying into into the clouds, and he eventually they find him. But anyway, so it, it's quite interesting because you have Deku, who's like he doesn't have any quirks; he's quirkless, is what they call him. Uh, and then uh, Katsuki uh, kind of makes fun of him throughout his childhood. They go to the same middle school, and then they apply to this uh, uh, hero academy. So you have. <clears throat> So you have kind of the uh, the first four, it says, are really start uh, are really somewhat of a like entering the academy type thing, uh, and then the last five, uh, the, yeah, the last five are kind of the uh, so the last five here are really the uh, kind of wind up and then into the uh, like main fight at the end where All Might has to like save everyone. And they save All Might as well. Uh, probably my fa one of my favorite episodes is Deku versus uh, uh, Kachan, which Kachan is uh, <clears throat> Kachan is the name of uh, Katsuki. They have different names. Um, like Deku's actual name is uh, Izuku, uh, but I'm just gonna call him Deku because it's easier for me. And that's also the name he chooses at the end of it. Um, but yeah, it, it's not really shown what All Might's powers are. Like, it's clear that it's super strength. He can jump, and the jumping acts like flying almost, where he can jump so far and so high that it almost acts like it. But yeah, super strength, jumping. He's uh, he's very quick because of that. Um, he doesn't seem to have too many other powers that I can tell, but I have been told that that is not the extent of of his powers oh here we go here's a better story arc uh, description here so you have the entrance exam art for the first four episodes the quirk appreciation test arc for one and a half episodes episode five and six there you have the battle trial arc which uh, picks up in halfway through episode six so that's 2.5 episodes because it goes to episode eight and then the usj arc which is uh five episodes nine to thirteen uh, and in the USJ, you kind of meet this other character called 13, who apparently makes black holes. Yeah, I, I didn't stutter. She makes black holes. <laughs> like, like it, it's kind of incredible. Um, and how the, the smoke 
uh, portal guy, the villain there, uses that against her is so creative. I was so shocked on how they use these guys' powers against them is so insane. Uh, the eraser head guy, I uh, I quite liked um, throughout. I just thought he was a great character, and then I thought I I legit when his head gets crushed into the he, so Nomu essentially sneaks up on him somehow and like grabs him and like smashes him into the the ground and essentially ends because he was defending for all the students to get out of there, but the students ended up being trapped by the portal guy. Uh, but then and he's kicking everyone's asses. And uh, he starts fighting the, the hand guy that can disintegrate people. And he disintegrated, like, part of his elbow. And he backs up a bit, and then Nomu was kind of just there after he fought a few people. And Nomu just grabbed him and slammed him into the wall, or into the ground, and, like, broke his bones. And, like, I, I thought killed him. Um, I really thought he was dead. Uh, because you, they keep showing him slam his head into the, into the concrete, into the ground... And then you keep seeing blood over and over again. And at a certain point, there's a pool of blood that's surrounding his uh, face guard. And so I really just thought this dude was dead. But he was clinging to life somehow. And they say that he's going to be fine except for maybe his eyes in the next season. So we'll see. Um, but just props really to some of these actors here and actresses. Uh, Justin Brenner is the English uh, kind of voice actor for uh, Izuku, who's Deku. Um, his voice is a little, like, kiddish, but I guess that makes sense considering that all these characters are 15. <laughs> uh, like, all of these super powerful, like, this is a high school, by the way. This UA thing is a high school. It's not a, uh, like, a college or anything like that. So all these characters are in high school, which is ridiculous when you see some of their character designs. I'm like, what in the world were you thinking? That's, no, no high schooler should look like that. That's insane. Um, but yeah, and then you have, uh, a lot, a lot of other cool ones. You have, uh... Here we have uh, Christopher Sabat, which is All Might. Uh, you have Clifford Chapin, uh, Chap yeah, Chapin, who is uh, Katsuki. Uh, and honestly, uh, that was another one of my favorite characters throughout. Like, he is kind of an asshole and, like, a bully. And I honestly thought they were prepping him up to be, like, the main villain of the, of the season, kind of. He's an antagonist, obviously, uh, throughout. Um, but I really thought that it was going to be, like, a full turn. But what I think is going to happen with him is that in, like, maybe season three or four, there's currently five seasons, and it sounds like they're going to make more. Season, like, three or four, he's going to do, like, a full, like, turn of, like, wow, you're the villain now. Because he's insanely powerful. Like, it's been shown. The only one that can really rival him is Deku if he can control his powers. But realistically, it's the the ice guy, the guy that can shoot uh, ice out of his hands. Um, Shoto, uh, he, he is, like, half cold, half hot where he can, like, his powers are insane, like, absolutely ridiculous, this guy is the most overpowered, I would, maybe All Might could beat him, because All Might could probably break out of this stuff, but I'm just like, this guy's the most insanely overpowered, just because he can stop you in the, in your tracks, and it sounds like he can just kill you, like, straight up kill you, if he leaves you encased in ice long enough, and his reflexes are insane, he was recommended, so the ways to get into this UA uh, they took 40 people, 36 people were uh, tried out and like got past the written and physical exams, uh, which the physical ex exam was essentially a test of if they can kill a bunch of things, a bunch of robots and get points, uh, or if they are rescue uh, heroes, which means that they're like uh, support characters. Uh, and then there's people that were recommended. He's one of the four people that were recommended and got in. Uh, the other one that I remember was one that can, like, create stuff. She can, like, create just anything. Um, but it takes her... Like, obviously, it takes her time and, like, energy to do it. All You know what I really love about this show as well is that all of these characters have drawbacks to their powers. Uh, actually, except for Shoto, it seems like. Um, but all the rest of them have drawbacks. Like, All Might can only use his power for a certain amount of time because he was, like, gravely injured in battle, like, five years ago. Uh, actually, another one that might not have drawbacks is, uh, Tenya, uh, who's the, the guy that can use jets, because he just kind of does it, and there's no drawbacks, um, but then you have, uh, o uh, Ochako, uh, who she is the girl that can, like, lift stuff, and, uh, her, her thing is, like, she'll vomit rainbows, actually, <laughs> if she uses her power too much, uh, you obviously have, uh, uh, Deku, uh, Izuku, who he basically can use his powers. He gets one go at it because he's not adapted to it yet. 
and then once he uses it, whatever body part he uses is broken, like just destroyed because he uses too much energy in that area. Uh, but yeah, it seems like like there's a good mix. Like I don't, from what I know, I don't think uh, Katsuki, who's the guy that can do explosions, and Deku's main like rival in the school. Uh, I don't think he has any drawbacks to his power per se. He's just extremely egotistical, so that like really hurts him in uh, certain situations. But yeah, I think overall, like I really like how the characters are structured. It's a very solid plot line, um, and I do like this whole first season. Really seemed like I, I was honestly shocked it was the end end of the thing, but maybe it's because I watched thirteen episodes of television in one day, so that might have played into it. Um, but I was honestly shocked that it was it seemed as short as it was, but it really is an origin story arc. Like when you look at it, I know there's it says that there's like uh, there's four different like story arcs here. Um, but realistically, I think this whole season is like a, uh, just an origin story, uh, for this character at the beginning, like at this first season, actually, I think the, yeah, the first episode is literally called origin. Uh, and then I really do think this whole first season fa falls in line with, <clears throat> falls in line with that one, uh, really well. Um, I believe this whole, yeah, this whole season, it looks like came out in, uh, 2017, I believe. No, 2016. So this whole uh, this whole first season came out in uh, 2016 uh, here, and yeah, that that lines up because they've been going five seasons so far. So yeah, but this is it's really solid. It re it reminded me of Yu-Gi-Oh style animation, um, I, and I, and I honestly liked it dubbed. I didn't notice a difference. The only thing that was somewhat confusing, but I quickly found out not quickly, but it took me a bit. Uh, but I found out what the uh, what kind of the uh, I guess how how you can tell what's in the mind and what's being spoken, uh, because when it's dubbed, like they still do the m mouth movement, so you're able to see when it's spoken or not. But there were certain times where I'm like, wait, is he saying that out loud or is he just thinking that? Because there is a lot of internal dialogue and narr narration early on. There there's a lot of, um, and then flashbacks early on. There's quite a lot of just to get you into the characters. Uh, but yeah, um, this was an amazing first season. I'm really glad I watched it. I highly recommend it. I don't know why you're listening to this if you haven't watched it for the first season of My Hero uh, Academia. But if you haven't and you've listened to this, I hope I've convinced you to watch it. Uh, because it, even even with everything I've said, I know I spoiled like the first season, how it ends and kind of the big plot line. But I didn't touch on a lot of smaller things. So even if you did watch through this... You can still go and watch the, the first season of it and completely enjoy it and completely get a good, like, uh, sentiment out of it. Like, when I was watching it, I was really like, holy shit, this guy is, it, it's, it's, it's life lesson shit, you know? Like, it, they're, they're, they do, they do good with this. Um, and I was thoroughly surprised, uh, with how much I started connecting to Deku and his kind of journey uh it's like self-empowerment and like i i can do it no matter what anyone says i believe in myself and that's what's important in this scenario no matter who doubts me no, no matter who i want the praise of it doesn't matter if i get that praise it matters if i believe in my soul of souls that i can do that and that's ultimately what the show shows of deku that's ultimately uh against all odds even when he get and he doesn't have some great hero like he obviously does have great hero moments but his final like chance for a hero moment he actually fails like he he saves uh, all might by giving him a few more seconds but ultimately he does fail that hero moment where he's not the one to defeat the villains he needs help from the other pros uh, to, who come on in and save them but he did give all might a few seconds he was willing to put his life on the line for someone that he looks up to that he believes in and that believes in him and probably one of the first people ever in his life to believe in him. And that's a pretty powerful sentiment. And if you've ever had that belief in you, you know what I'm talking about. Because it is very powerful uh, when you feel like no one else believes in you except for this one person or two people. Um, and even when he didn't believe in himself and someone else did believe in him, that gave him the confidence. It's, it's, that's actually exactly what happened to me in sixth grade. I didn't believe that I, you know, was, and this is getting a bit personal, but I, I had, I had a teacher actually. Obviously, my my parents, like I obviously, but as a kid, I wasn't like listening to that. But I had a, an outsider, a teacher, that actually came and said, like, you can do whatever, like you can, you need to put your mind to it. Like she she saw something in me, and that really uh, promoted me into what I'm doing today, which is 
political science. It's I'm trying to help people. And I hope that I can help people like she helped me. It made a profound impact on my life. Um, and ultimately, I think that's a similar correlation to what like All Might's effect on Deku was. He changed his entire course of his life um, for the better. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what happens with him. It's a story I can relate to. It's a story I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Because uh, it's, it's not a complex story, uh, like, more moral, like, arc and, like, understanding. Um, but, yeah, with that being said, uh, I hope you guys have a great one. Uh, I can't wait to watch more of uh, My Hero Academia. It's quickly becoming one of my new favorite shows. It's not up there with, like, even though Game of Thrones had its floppy ending, like, it's not up there with Game of Thrones or Avatar or, like, uh, some of these shows that I really like. But it is up there, and it is quickly climbing.